Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast with Bryce Johnson. It's a show that unpacks sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Enjoy inspiring conversations and thought-provoking interviews. You'll hear stories from people that will inspire, challenge, and encourage you. Now, from the Unpacking It studios in Charlotte, North Carolina, uniting sports fans everywhere, here is Bryce Johnson. And joining us now is former NFL fullback Justin Griffin. He was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the fourth round of the 2003 NFL Draft after playing his college football at Mississippi State. He also spent time with the Raiders, Seahawks, and Texans, and after his playing days, was on the coaching staff in Oakland and Seattle. He's a husband, a father, a restaurant owner, and a brother-in-law of former NFL player Al Wallace. Justin is also a passionate speaker and a man of faith, and we're thrilled to have him join us today on Unpacking It. Justin, thanks so much for being with us. How are you? Man, thank you guys for having me. I am doing well, man, and enjoying this day. And um, just glad to be on the show, man. Thank you guys. Definitely thank you guys for asking me to do it. I'm ecstatic about it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. And, and of course, the, the NFL season has officially kicked off. And so as a, oh, former, yeah, man. <laughs> as a former player and coach, do, do you still follow the game closely? And, and what are you most intrigued by this year? Uh, I, I, I definitely follow the game, man. When you know, when you when you grow up in something, man, from top one all the way up to to, to professional league, man, it doesn't leave you easily. So, <laughs> so I, I tend to I tend to follow the game at the at the high school, college, and pro level, um, and just seeing just seeing the trends, man. I'm, I'm mostly excited about this year. Obviously, in the NFL, man, we are they are approaching. I think this is uh, their hundred years they've been active. So. So uh, I, I, I'm excited about that for guys still being able to to make the game safe and still being able to play the game. And um, one thing I tend to look at, you know, I was an old fullback in the league, and I'm looking at all the new trends now. Yeah, it seems like the full the fullback uh, that's the dinosaur position. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you don't see a whole bunch of them out there. So I'm glad I was a part of that era when fullbacks were somewhat important. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about that. So, so why do you think it's not as prominent, and and how do you feel about that? And, and do you feel like teams are missing out by not utilizing the fullback? The game has, and with everything, it, everything evolved at some point. I mean, the game has changed a lot. Uh, you you see where uh, players who can who can really move in space can really make people miss, really people get get open. You can kind of see that's changing far as offensive on the offensive side of the ball a lot of people are throwing the ball now a lot of people want smaller guys on the field you know fullback there was you had one job one job was to ram block somebody <laughs> get that person out of the way so the person behind you can score touchdowns and that's you have to know that going in but the game has changed so much man a lot of people you got great athletes man who can move in space defensively and offensively and when you have that, you don't you don't have a dire need to have a fullback in the game all the time. It, it's interesting, and it's such a, a great position, and it's weird not to see it, it out there as often. But former NFL fullback Justin Griffith is with us right now on unpacking it. So, so how did you end up being a fullback? How, how did you land as, as that being the the position that that you were able to to have a, a nice NFL career doing? I tell you what, man. Uh, uh, you know, coming from a little town in McGee, Mississippi, that's the town that I'm from. You know, football was very important. We had guys like John Mangum, Chris Mangum, a guy named Harold Shaw, guys like that came out of that little town of McGee, Mississippi. Wow. Where you, uh, football, high school football, was very important. So you know, growing up a kid, you 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 played the game, and and being from a small town in the wing T set. The fullback is pretty much the main guy in that wing team offense. You run the ball the whole lot. Hmm. Well, when I got to Mississippi, when I got to Mississippi State, uh, I was one of the bigger, <laughs> the bigger running backs uh, that they had recruited that year, and uh, I was in the mix with uh, Desenzo Miller and and Dante Walker and all those guys. And Coach Sherrill said, Justin, you big enough. I think you can play fullback. Hmm. Well, I both that at the first time. I was like, Coach, I don't want to play fullback, Coach. <laughs> and it took me, I would say, it took me two years of where I literally one time 
walked off the field because I felt like I was being cheated. Hmm. And, and I, I tell you, I got some great information by the man, by the head coach at the time. And he told me, he said, Justin brought me in his office. I remember this day. He said, Justin, if you play fullback, you will play in the NFL for years. Wow. And I took the man's information and um, I, lo and behold, I, I, I took into the position and lo and behold, I got drafted by the Atlanta Falcons and I played eight years in the NFL. Wow. And uh, I, I give, I, I mean, some, some, there are some certain things that, that you experience or that things that happen in your life where that was a pivotal moment for me. Hmm. And I'm glad I took the information that he told me and applied it, worked my behind off to get big enough and strong enough to play the position. And I ended up doing that for eight years of my life. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. Justin Griffith, former NFL fullback with us on Unpacking It. And and so you, you mentioned earlier, you know, the game is getting safer. Now, the fullback position was always a very physical position. You're putting yourself out oh, yeah. there and, and, and sacrificing mm-hmm. physically big time. So from that perspective, you're still glad that you played that position? How are you feeling today health-wise and just kind of this, this whole idea of, of what you went through th- during those eight seasons as a fullback? Well, I, I, you know, now <laughs> I wish I was playing – kind of wish I was playing in the era that they're playing in now <laughs> because uh, most teams after the, the new CBA that happened back in 2011, put a whole lot of stipulations on guys, uh, put a whole lot of stipulations on coaches too. Guys are not to be, are not required to be around the facility as much as we had to be around the facility uh, where we started all season workouts in February, March. Now guys are off until April. And so they had a little more downtime to to take care of your bodies, to spend more time with your families. But when I played, it was like end of season in, in December. All right, we're going to start workouts at the end of February. Ooh. And and, 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 they, and football was a year-round thing. And not only just with the workout portion of it, but the training camp portion of it. Hmm. Now, man, when I – my head coach, when I came out, his name, by the, his name was Dan Reeves. Well, Dan right. Reeves was an old-school kind of guy. <laughs> and when you had two that two days, you had two days. That means you had two days, you had live goal line, you had live short yardage, you had live contact at doing two days. And, 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 and now if you get a certain number of days that you have to practice in pads and you cannot practice – have a two or eight practice consecutively, consecutively behind each other. That's right. So the game has changed, and and they're making it safer, and they're making it safer. And I'm glad to hear that for the the players who are playing now. That means careers can be, people can carry on with their careers, and guys can and can take care of themselves more. But I will say the life that the life that I live right now, I do have some aches and pain. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that I have to deal with. Yeah, uh, coming from the the old school kind of way of playing football, and even uh, even just thinking about guys before me, Ooh. and I mean those guys, I mean they went two a days for months, man, for a month. I'm going through two a days. Dan Reed was nice enough to, nice enough to cut it at two weeks, <laughs> but those guys went for months. <laughs> of going through this whole thing where they had to make a team, man. And not only that, and pay, obviously the, the salaries were different before me and when I, when I played and now with the, what the salaries are now, football has evolved, is evolving and it's becoming safer and people still love um, the NFL ball and, and it's still growing. That's right. The, the numbers were up on, on Thursday night as the season got kicked off, so, so people are watching and, and still enjoying it for sure. Justin Griffith, our guest right now on Unpacking It, former NFL fullback. He was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the fourth round of the 2003 NFL Draft. And so as you look back at your NFL career, of course you, you, know, you, you deal with the aches and pains from a, a nice career in the league, but, but what are you most thankful for and, and what did you gain by being an NFL player? Man, I mean, what I'm thankful for is um, the type of, well, I'm going to say the commitment that you had to to put out to even make a football team. Mm. 
I'm glad I had the experience. I'm glad I had the experience of going through the, the combine. I'm glad I had the experience of going through the draft. I'm glad I had that experience of, of sitting down and having interviews with the Falcons, with uh, the, the Bengals, sitting down, sitting down and having actual interviews where these guys are asking you questions about your life and asking you questions about stuff on the field. Hmm. I'm also I'm glad I'm, I had the opportunity of being a rookie where you, you, you were the new guy in town, but you had to learn how to adjust. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I had the opportunity of getting past that first year and becoming the veteran and helping other guys behind me. Mm-hmm. See, that's the NFL is. I mean, if you, I mean, if you ever have the opportunity to make it there, anybody, it's it's the it's the walk that you appreciate. Wow. It's what it took to get there. It's the commitment that you had to put in to get there. It was the support of family members that you had. My parents supported me. It, it's the stuff that it took to get there. And once you get into that position, you don't want to let it go. Mm. So it, the work that it took to get there, it's even harder to stay there because there's a young man behind you that's trying to get in the same position that you're in right now. <laughs> right. And so, <laughs> and so, and so, if 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 you appreciate the walk to get there, once you get in there, it's the work that's going to keep you there. Now people have to be able to trust you. Now people have to be able to, be, to, to trust that you're going to you're going to come back ready to go. Mm. So now it's, it's more of is all right, I'm, I'm in it now. And now I have to do what I need to do to, to sustain the life I would like to have and the career that I would like to have. A lot of the guys, a lot of the guys get in, man, and they think the break, you can, and you kind of pump the brakes a little bit. But that's the time you need to hit the gas. Mm. You know, you need to go as fast as you can to work out, get better, study film. Uh, do more than just be a running back. Do more than just be a receiver. Most of the time, if you can do more, you'll probably end up staying on the team a whole lot longer than you will just being one a one trick pony. So That's now right. you can you you just learn stuff. You just learn stuff, and it's good for your life because you take that same discipline mm. into your life, mm. into your life, and that that's what I got out of the NFL, and uh, and and it's it has helped me along the way. That, that's cool. Well, I want to talk more about what you're up to uh, these days in, in just a little bit. Justin Griffith, our guest right now on Unpacking It, former NFL fullback. Uh, but, but right after your playing days were over, you, you became a, a coach in the NFL. And, and I've heard there's a, a pretty crazy story about how you were actually hired by the Oakland Raiders. So, so what happened and what's the story there? <laughs> Well, so after 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 I finished playing, man, I went through like some like a lot of players. When you when you are when you stop playing, and the way the way I stopped playing is uh, the way that I did not envision I had to stop playing. Mm. So I was I with the Houston Texans, and I, we were at training camp, and and you know like an old fullback lead play, I went to go block a, uh, a a guy, and all of a sudden I felt this shock go out through all, all my limbs and all my legs. Oh. And so I go, and so we get done with practice. I go home. I'm sitting in the room with my wife, and I said, "Hey, look, I, man, my my right toe is tingling." Ooh. And so I call the trainers. We go in. We do an MRI, and they say, "Hey, man, you pinched your spinal cord." Oh. And so at at that time, at that time, I'm 30 years old, and when the doctor comes in and say, "Hey, man, you dodged the bullet. You might want to think about." retiring or we need to fix this problem. So either way, that year was a, it's just a waste for me. Mm. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, most people know this, but uh, but if you are 30 years old and you are on the end of your career and you have neck problems, it's going to be hard for you to get a fullback job in NFL if you already have neck problems and you're 30. That's right. That's going to be a hard thing to do. It's going to be a hard come to convince a GM that you can come back from that. So, mm. Um, I think I made the smart decision of going on and retiring. And that, the year I retired, I had a chance. My wife and I had our first kid at the time, and that was a blessing within itself. So it helped ease the pain a little bit. But I'm still going through this dark phase. Mm. So one day, I'm sitting in, so one day I'm sitting in our our house in the dark room trying to figure out my next move. My wife comes in, and she turns the lights on. She says, "Justin, you are not this guy." Why don't you just get up and do what you've been doing? You might not can play it, but why don't you coach it? Hmm. A light popped on, and I started making, started connecting with people and all that. So I got to the point where I connected with a guy by the name of Mo Kelly, who's the player development guy in Seattle. Hmm. I did a minority internship program in Seattle 
for a year on the Pete Carroll staff. And now the year is over and now it's time for me to find a job. Mm. So most of the time, if you, if you're looking for an NFL job, they say you have to go down to your, to the senior bowl and you have to get out and network with all the coaches who would be at the senior bowl, all the GMs who would be at the senior bowl. You got to take your cars down there and go there and just network. Well, I had a plane ticket already set up to go down to the senior bowl that year. And, and I get a call from U.S. Airways, and they sent a text message and calls, and they said, your plane has been canceled. Now, oh. this, I had to be there. Yeah, I had to be there on Monday morning to even get out and start to have a chance to network with some coaches and say, hey, I'm interested in coaching and take my car. Well, they told me my, that my plane had been canceled. Now, it's 9 o'clock at nighttime. My flight was supposed to take off by like 1030. Mm. And – and I said, you know what, man, maybe this coaching thing is not for me. Hmm. Maybe it's not for me. I get a call. We check the weather in Mobile. I don't see anything about some thunderstorms and all that. So I'm sitting in my bed. It's about 11 o'clock at night. I'm sitting around. And I said, do I really want to do this coaching thing? I just could not go to sleep. Hmm. And I looked at my wife and I said, look, I'll be back. I'm heading down to Mobile. I got myself up. Got myself ready. It's twelve o'clock in the morning. Oh. I jump in I jump in my truck and I take off from Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> at twelve o'clock. Oh. <laughs> at Man. twelve o'clock in the morning because there's something on the inside on the, on the inside of me telling me, Hey, you, you cannot stay here just because you had a look just because you had something to happen. Yeah. That means this thing has to stop here. Oh. You know, it, it means it has to stop here. So I get in that truck, man. I drive. I don't, I, it, I don't know how many hours it took me, but I drove all night. Oh I drove all goodness. night. I still have my hotel room, man. Oh. I check into I check into my hotel room. I go out and I'm networking. I get my cards and all that kind of stuff. I come back to the hotel room for lunch. I'm walking down and lunch, and I hear this familiar voice that I've heard that I remember when I first came into the league. Hmm. Well, that familiar bar, that familiar voice was a guy by the name of Al Miller. Al Miller was the strip coach when I first was drafted to the Atlanta Falcons. Coach Miller said, Justin, I haven't seen you. I said, we haven't seen each other since, I mean, it's been years. And then we said, I'm sitting there talking to him and we eat lunch and we having a good time. He said, Justin, what are you trying to do? I said, coach, I'm trying to get into coaching. I'm trying to start the quality control level and work my way up, man. I'm trying to do that. Coach Miller picked up his phone, and he called a guy by the name of Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen was there. He had just gotten the head coaching job for the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Said, Coach, he said, Coach Allen, I have somebody I think you need to hire. And Al Miller gave him my name, and in two days I was hired to be the Oakland Raiders quality control coach. The thing about it is that I had to be at the hotel with this man. Everything lined up. Yeah. <laughs> I had to be at the hotel. I had to make the drive to be able to get the job that I was searching for. Uh, it took me eight nine. It took me eight nine hours to get there. But what? I, but what? But the reason why I couldn't sleep on the inside that night is because I had destiny was waiting for me. Mm. But I had to drive to get to the <laughs> park to, to the place. <laughs> I had to drive to get to the place where I can experience the love of God. Uh, so amen. I can experience. So that so I got the so I got the job, man, and the rest is history. <laughs> that is so cool. What a, what a great story, Justin Griffith, our guest right now on Unpacking It, NFL player, and and then became uh, an NFL assistant coach uh, with the Oakland Raiders, and it's so cool to hear that. And and so what I'm I'm interested in in hearing. We'll, we'll talk more about your your faith journey, but but specifically with this story. So you felt like okay. This was what you were meant to do to, to be a coach with, with, with Oakland. What was that experience like? And, and ultimately, how did you decide that maybe coaching wasn't what you were going to do long term? And, and so just kind of that, that whole process and what you learned throughout that. Yeah, so, so, I mean, so before I went down, before I made that trip, before I made that trip to drive the mobile, I said, I, had this, I said this prayer in my truck. I said, well, God, if you really want me to coach – in this phase of my life, you have to make, you have to open the door. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to drive down here. I'm going to see what's going on. I'm going to do what I need to do, but you have to open the door. And man, I'm telling you, man, he was in the hotel that I was in 
hmm. at the in the same places. I, you can't line this stuff up. You can't make it up. No. So here I am. I, I, I'm I'm trying to move through my phases of life, just moving through my phases of life, and I get this opportunity to coach for the Oakland Raiders, become this quality control. Uh, offensive line coach. And I would say, man, that that was, I mean, if you are out a quality control coach or, or any entry level where you have to be an intern or you have to be a quality control coach, it teaches you a lot of valuable things that you have to have. I bet. It teaches you time management, <laughs> especially, I mean, I worked for a guy by the name of Tony Sperano. Oh, yeah. Tony Sperano just recently passed away about two years ago. So he was my, he was the guy that I was working on. He was very detailed, very detailed, attention to detail, how to do things, do time, do things in a timely order and, 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 and doing it the right way and putting you all into it, mm. man. So having a chance to work on a guy like that, where I had to make sure his PowerPoints were ready to go, I had to make <laughs> sure all this, <laughs> I had to make sure all of his, uh, his, his, his clips, the video clips were ready to go for the offensive lineman and then getting out there, setting up the drills, running drills with him, learning the key terms of the offensive lineman, sitting up on the sideline with him, listening to him talk, and, and, and just the details of how to be a professional, a professional as a coach. Listening to all that was I can never I can never replace how valuable that that was to me because you learn so much. That's cool. You learn so much. You have to do it. I mean, sometimes you have to put late hours in to do it. You have to do it. And so here I am. I'm coaching. I'm I'm having this this opportunity, man, with him, and he would let me run the meetings in the meeting rooms. He would let me go outside and 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 run some of the drills that the offensive offensive linemen were running. He would let me get up there and draw some of the practice cards. I, it was a great experience of learning how to manage a whole group of guys so we can go out and complete a task at hand. Hmm. It was a great opportunity. And then our season took a turn. It took a turn. Uh, the thing is, the thing about the NFL now, if you're not winning, <laughs> <laughs> if if you are if you're not winning, it's gonna be hard for you to keep a job as a coach if you're not winning games. That's right. And uh, that that last year in 2014, I was in Oakland. We I think we we started out. I think we were 0 and 3. We started out, and then we took a trip to London, and we played the Miami Dolphins in London, and we got it was an embarrassing loss in Miami. We came back, and and Dennis Allen they let Dennis Allen go, and Tony Sperano became the head coach. Oh, that's right. And here we are. We're going through this season, and and man, we won some games. We played hard in some games, but to see him do that, and then now my responsibility, he gave me more responsibility with the offensive alignment of doing things. It's just valuable stuff that I had uh, that that I can take with me in the game of life. Not only just football, just the game of life. That's right. Of having that, in, knowing how to manage things and stuff, just having it. And so, lo and behold, everybody, they, they let the whole crew go right after the season. Tony didn't get the job. They were moving to – yeah, I think Jack Del Rio got the job. Mm. And here I am. I'm sitting – my wife and I, we have two kids now, and I have missed – I have especially the second. The second child, I basically missed this young man growing up. Ah. I mean, he's six now, and I'm, I missed – I missed so many years of, of seeing him grow up because I was, in a, I was coaching. I mean, coaching takes up a lot of time. Yeah. And I said, you know what? This might not be for me. Hmm. This might not be for me. I'm a, I said, well, I'm going I'm I'm to I'm I'm go with it right now. And I said, God, if it's time for me to make a shift, I want you to make a shift. I, and so I got a call from Oklahoma State. And Mike Gundy said, Justin, got your name from a few coaches. I want to fly you out for an interview. And at the time, at the time, I left Mississippi State without my my college degree. Mm. And so I want what I wanted to do. I want I told Coach Gundy. I said, Coach Gundy, before you fly my fly me out, I just want to be honest with you. Now I did not finish my college degree. And so uh, he checked. He said, Let me call you back. Let me check with the uh, the AD and see if we can work something out where you can coach and you can finish your college college degree. Well, that did not happen. Oh. And so my so we got up, we moved back to Charlotte, North Carolina, and lo and behold, I said, you know what? I want to go back to school. I want to finish my degree. 
Hmm. If something comes up like this again, I would never, ever, ever want that door to close in my face the way it closed. Hmm. And so, man, I, and so I started school. I always tell people I started school in 1998. I didn't finish. I didn't get my college degree until December of 2015. <laughs> but, but you got it. But you got it. That's, that, that's a long time. That, yeah, man. So a one door open and another door closed kind of put me where I am right now. It's, and it happens like that, man. Sometimes you got to, I always say, man, you just got to follow God. When he turns, you have to turn. When he goes left, you have to go left. If he tells you to stop, you have to stop. It's just following him so you can see exactly where he wants you to be. Mm. And that's what I mean. That's where I am right now, man. I've had an opportunity. My wife and I have, we had two at the time. We've added two more. I've had a chance to be in all four of my boys lives right now. Uh And, 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 and that thing was, that's more gratifying than winning football games for me. Uh, Having to coach them at a, at a, a uh, flag football league for the YMCA. I get excited about that. Uh-huh. Uh, being able to see them and swim and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I can see, or oh, a lot of kids can appreciate having both parents involved in their lives. Amen. Amen. Wow. What, what a great story. Justin Griffith, our guest right now on unpacking it, former NFL fullback and, and also uh, an NFL coach. And, and now you and your wife own a, a restaurant. It's called Famous Toastery, and, and it's in Uptown Charlotte. And, and so now having just heard that aspect of your story as far as, all right, you spent a couple years coaching. You learned a bunch of skills. It allowed you to, to really transition from your playing days, and it gave you, you know, something to pursue. And so you, you did that, and then you realize, all right, that's not where, where God ultimately wants me. He brings you to Charlotte and, and now opens up this opportunity for you to, to own a restaurant. So what has that experience been like and, and, and how has this maybe been a, a sweet spot for you? Yeah, that, 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 this experience has been, uh, I tell you, it's been gratifying and it's been stressful, stressful at the same time. But I was built for this. That's cool. I was built for it. All those years of going through training camp, all those years of being on tone, under Tony and learning those management skills, all those years of watching my parents and watching my in-laws, all those years of doing it, now I'm out here by myself running my own business. Mm. This, has been, this has been one of the things that has been, like I said, the most gratifying and the most stressful parts of my life when it comes to running this famous toaster. And the reason, reason being is business. It's just business. It's, it's business. I think a lot of business people can 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 uh, appreciate opening a, a store or opening a business. And I think they can also sit there and tell you about the the stressful things that come behind it. But how I got to the famous toastery man is that my wife and I we were we were driving our kids to daycare, and we were in Concord, North Carolina. And and we kept passing the store, and, and it had a toast on the outside of it. <laughs> and I kept asking my wife, I would say, Kim, what what's this toast on the outside of this building? I, I, I've never heard of a, I've seen a store like that. So we went in, we tried it out. I loved it. I went in the second time, but I, anytime I, I love something, I always try to get some a different perspective from someone. So I asked my mother-in-law to come with me, and she loved the food. And then the next time we went, I went through another time, and then I asked a whole other people, a lot of other people to come with me. They all loved the food. So what I did, I got online, filled out an application, I spoke with the corporate guys, and spoke with management, and then the rest of it is pretty much history. Got a chance to put a store in Uptown, Charlotte, and it's a franchise. Yep. versus a startup mm. so we talking about a franchise which fits what i used to do hmm. so if i if i'm gonna if see most franchises they come they already come with the the business plan how you should run it how you should do things almost like a playbook yeah so i'm so used to running playbooks that a franchise is nothing for me to learn <laughs> they're going to teach me <laughs> They're gonna teach me to play I mean, the franchise and the and what you do and all that kind of stuff, just like I did in football. I learned the plays, and not only did I learn the plays as a coach, I had the chance to teach the, to to teach the plays. So now I'm just stepping in into something that I've been doing for all of my life, learning concepts and running concepts. Oh. That's all I've been doing all my life, 
And so I applied it to the business world and it works. Mm. It works. I applied it to the business world and it works. And that's where it, that's where I, 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 I looked at this famous toastery concept. It allows me to have the business and it also allows me to have the family life that I want to. Oh. We are a seven to three. We are a seven to three operation. I can get out of the building by four o'clock. I can come home and help with homework by four thirty. Wow. I can come home and help with baths by five o'clock. I can come home and, and actually watch the kids grow up then missing all of it. And I'm and that's the most blessed part about it for me. Mm. Being able to be to being able to be an active dad with all the stuff that that I've been through and all the stuff that I, I've had some good moments. I've had some moments where I was like, man, God, you got to help me get through this one because I don't consider all moments bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to consider them say all moments are bad. Some moments you just got to press. You got to press through those moments. That's right. And I've had those in football. When I had, when I had pitched my spinal cord, I, I mean, I've broken my ankle. I've torn my, AC, my ACL, but I had to press through those moments. I bounced back. Mm. And just like this right here through business, some, there are some moments I'm going to have to press. And there are some moments I'm going to sit back and say, boy, look what the Lord has done. Amen. That's, that's, that's just kind of the life that you, that's the, that's life for everybody. Uh, pressing, pressing is part of your life. Mm. It's part of your life. One woman, and, and I don't want to go in all the way to the Bible. One woman in the Bible, man, she had, she had an issue. She was bleeding. She had been bleeding for 12 years. Mm. And the Bible tells us that she heard Jesus was coming in town. Every once in a while, see, I, I thought, see, Jesus, I meant a, a God thing in Mobile. I had to press through the night to get there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So this woman, this woman heard Jesus was in town, and the Bible tells us that the crowd was so large that it began to crush Jesus. But this lady had to, this lady had to get to him, so the Bible, the Bible tells us she started pressing her way to Jesus. He, she got close enough to touch him, and she was healed of this 12-year uh, issue that she had been dealing with. Well, she would have never received that miracle if she didn't make up her mind to press. Mm. See, I, if, we just, if you just keep pressing in your life, whatever it is, if you just keep pressing, yeah, you're going to go through some dark moments. You might go through some trying times. But if you keep pressing, at some point, you're going to reach your hand out. And you're going to, you're going to, you're going to receive something that you didn't expect mm. and it's going to bless your life. <laughs> wow. It's going to bless your life. And so running, running this business has allowed me to experience all worlds of it, man. But the one thing that it has allowed me to do is be able to come home and be a husband to Kim and be a, a father to Brody, Dylan, Logan, and Ethan. That's what, that's one Amen. thing it has. It has and then I can I can still turn on my TV and, and get my football and get my football. <laughs> I, I'm with you, man. I know I love that that perspective and, and just a, a great in, encouragement uh, for all of us today. And, and Justin, man, I, I I could talk all day. I feel like we've only scratched the surface. Uh, but but let's let's wrap up and, and we we've heard just a, a little bit about your your faith. Uh, throughout your story and, and all that God's done in your in your life, and it's just so cool to see how you know, He really designed different aspects of your your life to come together and and for you to really thrive in this season of your life, which is just neat to hear. Uh, but but I'm curious, what is maybe something that 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 God is teaching you right now? Is there something that you've been been studying or or learning or or really just something that maybe God's revealed to you most recently? Man, you know uh, I. I, I will tell you this. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, God has been, obviously we know God is good. And oh, see, yeah. I, I'm learning more now that in, and, and besides the business and besides the, the plan, the career, I'm learning more now about who he is when you don't see him moving his finger in your life all the time. Hmm. I had a I had one man that I, I was struck I had one man that called me one time. This was back in two thousand and seven. I would I would, would never I would never forget this man telling me this. This man told me I, I called him, we were talking, a guy I went to church with back in Atlanta. And I told him, man, I'm having a rough time at training camp right now. It just seemed like it seems like a lot of things are off right now. And I'm praying, I'm asking God, I feel like I, God's not hearing me and stuff. And this man said something to me. He said, Man, look here. When you can't see God's hand moving in your life the way you want it to, 
you always have to remember and trust that his that he God has you in his heart, that his heart for you is always good. Mm. So when you can't see the things moving in your life, you have to trust that he has your best interest at heart. Mm. And see, I'm learning that. And I'm like, it, and it takes you, it takes you a little time to know that. Oh, yeah. It takes you a little time to understand that. It takes you a little time to mature, mm-hmm. to mature in your into your walk with Christ. And I'm, and I'm getting to the uh, an age now with I'm, but my maturity in Christ is stepping up mm. because because sometimes it's not going to look like it's going to work out, but if you hold on just enough, God always works it out. The Bible tells us He has His best, our best interests at heart. He says, I would not withhold one good thing from you. Mm. Not one good thing he will withhold from you. So when you are going through things with your with your family or when you're going through things with your business or you're going through things in your personal life and you just can't see God uh, moving uh, on your behalf, you always have to trust that God's heart is always for you. He's never, it's never against you. Mm. And the Bible tells us that, I would never leave you nor forsake you. So he's there. Mm. He's there. He's there all the time. I would never leave you nor forsake you. Neither height nor death can ever separate me from you. So I have to learn and trust. And see, I'm maturing in that area of my life right now. That's what God is dealing with me on. Hey, you trust me even when you can't see a way. Just know if I if, if you need a way, I make a way. Amen. If you need a door open, I will open the door. If you need a door closed, I will close that door. If you need anything in your life, I want to be your supplier. I don't want to just be someone you wake up and you read a devotional, a devotional and think it's all good for the rest of the day. I don't know. I want to be in every area, area of your life mm. because the Bible says he's omnipresent. That means he wants to be present in, present in your finances and present in your, in your marriage and present in your, in your parenting skills. He wants to be everything to you. So that's what I'm learning more and more in my life. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a great word. And, and I'm just, uh, yeah, just encouraged that, that as we, as we seek him, as we, we follow his lead, then, uh, he'll, he'll open and close what, what, what's needed and what's best for us. And, and oftentimes, That's right, man. And oftentimes it, it That's looks right. like, like you explained earlier, man, the, the plane, the flight, it wasn't going to work out, but there was another way. And, and, and ultimately it, it, it worked out. So <laughs> Man, lo- love your uh, your heart and passion, and and just uh, hearing your story, and it's just a story of of God's faithfulness, and and it's cool to see uh, all that He's doing in your life, and uh, man, Father of four, that that's awesome. So so wish you the the best with that, and uh, man, we'll definitely catch up again. And thank you so much for being a part of unpacking it today, and and being willing to share all that you did. No, well, thank you, God, for having me. For more information about the show, our events, and other resources, visit unpackingit.com. That's U-N-P-A-C-K-I-N-I-T dot com. We hope you are encouraged, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. To support our show and Unpacking It Ministries with a financial gift, visit unpackingit.com slash donate. We look forward to unpacking sports, faith, and life with you again next week.